Microsoft Edge has been available on Linux for quite a while now, but up until about a week or so ago, it's only been available in the dev channel. Now it's available in the beta channel. So the way that Microsoft releases their software is you have, I believe, three streams. You have the dev stream released once every week. That is where you get the most cutting edge features, pun intended. Then you have the beta channel, which is released, I believe, once every six weeks. This is more stable than the dev version, but is still a beta. And then after that, you get the stable release. So I thought, why not go and actually try out Edge and see if there is any reason to actually go and use this, ignoring the fact that it steals all your data and probably even just having this sort of my system, it's probably tracking everything I'm doing. Ignoring that, is there at least one killer feature that would make someone want to use this? And that's not just me saying, oh, Microsoft is evil, they steal your data. When you first open up the application, before you can even use the web browser as a web browser, it shows you a prompt saying, hey, would you like to have your data sent to Microsoft? This is enabled by default. Obviously, I went and disabled it, but because Edge is a proprietary browser, I have no way of knowing really if that has gone and done that. So I'm just trusting that it has. I don't particularly trust it that much, but maybe there's something here that will make us want to use this. So the first thing I want to talk about is the fact that Edge now actually comes with a built-in tracker blocker. I specifically mean tracker blocker because it is definitely not an ad blocker. If we go over to YouTube right now, you'll see exactly what I mean. Let's go and play this random Mr. Beast video right here. And okay, we get a pre-roll ad this time. Okay, it wasn't showing those before. We're also getting an ad off to the side here. And sometimes I've even had banner ads appear while I'm actually watching the video. So we definitely know it's not an ad blocker, but I might just have my settings set wrong and it's just letting those through. Let's go over to the settings to privacy search and services. It's set to strict and okay, it's definitely not an ad blocker. So what it claims to do is blocks a majority of trackers from all sites. Content and ads will likely have minimal personalization. Parts of sites might not work. I haven't run into that. Everything I've tried seems to work perfectly fine and it blocks known harmful trackers. But unlike something like say, you block origin or anything remotely customizable, you don't exactly have much control here. We can go and set what setting we want to use without really having any indication of what it's going to work on, we can see what's been blocked. So if you want to like look at your statistics like that, hey, that's cool. And you can have exceptions and you can turn it off. But that's about all. This does mean less general tracking on the internet for people who just don't bother picking a web browser. But if you want to have actual control, go just use uBlock Origin on anything else. Well, what about extensions? Maybe there's some killer extensions. So let's go over to the Chrome Web Store and we actually can just install anything we want. So let's go see some random thing here. Let's go install a custom cursor. That's that's definitely not going to be trying to steal all of my data or anything. And we can just add Chrome extensions because Edge is a Chromium based web browser. But when you first launch up Edge, it won't actually let you install from third party stores. If you try to install something from the Chrome Web Store, it'll show a little prompt saying, hey, do you want to allow these stores? Just go and enable them and then you can go use the Chrome Web Store. So let's go and add this and okay, that's been added just fine. I don't really care to configure it, but let's go and just pick something random like say this one here. And it's not working on this page for some reason, but over on this one, yep, that, that's working exactly as I'd expect. So I'm going to get rid of this because that's that's quite annoying. Uh, remove that, cool. So by default, you can only install from the Microsoft Edge store. So let's see if there's anything impressive over there. So this might take a little bit to load. Uh, there we go. There is currently, no, I don't want to sign up for your thing. There's currently 241 results. So because Edge is based on Chromium, Basically, no one is developing for it because there's no reason to actually go and do so. So all of the plugins we have here, we can already get as Chrome extensions anyway. There's three pages of them, but I don't think there's anything in here that's actually impressive. Most Chromium extensions are going to work perfectly fine. The ones you're going to have issues with are extensions that rely on local dependencies. So for example, Fire NVim, which relies on you having NeoVim installed. It's not a super common issue you're going to run across, but 
in the occasions when you want to use something like that, it just won't work. Also, plugins that require a Google account in your actual browser, for obvious reasons, won't work because in this case, you're going to be logged in with your Microsoft account or in my case, logged in with no account at all. Also, one thing to note about the Edge Store is it doesn't actually have a search bar for some reason. I don't know why. That's a very easy thing to add. Please go and fix that. Okay, what about your browser account then? Well, what about it? Because it does everything that a regular browser account does anyway. So up here in the corner where it normally is, we can go and make a profile. So we can go and have, say, our work profile and be logged into our work Facebook and our work WhatsApp and all of this other work stuff. And then we can make a home profile. And without having to actually go and log out of any of those services, we could then go and log into them again on a different profile. And then we can go and sync all of this information between all of our other devices. So if we have Edge on Android and Edge on Windows and Edge on iOS. Yes, Edge on iOS is going to exist if it doesn't already. You could just go and sync all of those things together and just share your data like every other browser does. Like I, I know I'm saying this in a very condescending way, but there's there's nothing special here. If you've ever used a browser sync functionality, it, it does what a browser sync functionality actually does. So let's move on from that into installing a site as an app. So you may know about a functionality known as progressive web apps, where you can take a website and then just install it as like an application on your system. Basically, it does the exact same thing as Electron, but rather than having to have this extra application, it just uses your web browser to do it instead. So let's go and install the YouTube app and just test it out. So all we need to do is go click on the icon up here where it says app available install YouTube. Now, not every site is going to have the icon appear in the URL bar like that. In some instances, like let's say we go to, I don't know, the Chrome Web Store, for example. In this case, it won't actually have a thing there to install the web app. It has some other stuff there, but we'll get to that in just a bit. So for this one, what we'd do is we'd go into the context menu here, go down to the app section, and then click install this site as an app. And that should work perfectly fine. And we can go and name it whatever we want. I'm just going to call it Chrome Web Store. And now that acts exactly the same way as YouTube is going to act as well. Now, if you ever want to go and reopen any of your progressive web apps, all you do is go back to that list and you'll see the ones you actually have installed. So let's go open up YouTube. And as we can see, basically it's just YouTube, but now we don't actually have a URL bar. All we can do is visit YouTube. Personally, I don't really care about this functionality, but I, I fully get why some people love to use these. And because Edge is a Chromium-based web browser, it has this feature that all Chromium-based web browsers actually have. Also, from now on, whenever you visit a website where you actually have the app installed for it, it's going to actually show you an icon to open up that website as the app instead of using it as the website like you were before. You don't have to go and do that, but it is a nice option to have there. Now, one thing that actually is kind of neat, which I don't think I've seen any other browsers actually do, is a function called collections. Now, collections are basically basically just tabs. Now, someone's going to argue that they're not basically just tabs, but they're basically just tabs with a couple of extra additions. So let's go over to YouTube and see what we can actually do. So we're going to make a new collection. I'm just going to call it videos, I guess. And let's say we want to go to, I don't know, this video right here and then add this one into the collection. So all we need to do is go click add current page and as we can see, it's going to be added like it would be for a tab. And if we go out of that, as we can see, now we actually have a videos group. The thing that makes it different from a tab, though, is we don't just have to go and add web pages. We can also go and add things like, say, we can add some text. Let's say we want to go and copy this text, right click on it, and then add to collections, we'll add to the videos collection. Now there's two items in here, and that text is in there as well. We can also go and add in images and videos rather than the entire page. Now, that's cool. I genuinely don't see the point. It, if someone has a use for this, let me know. But I don't see why you would use this. Now, there is a bit of functionality that is kind of useful. You just don't need Edge to actually do it. And that is the built-in reader mode. So if we go to this article right here, up in the top of the URL bar, there is the Enter Immersive Reader button, which I guess is supposed to be a book, but I'm not entirely sure. 
So this does what a reader mode is supposed to do. We have all the text in the center, we have all of the distracting elements missing, and it's just the content of the article. We can modify how the text looks, modifying the size and things like that. We can modify the, uh, the, the color if you want it to be green, if you hate yourself, you can do that. There is a nice grammar tool thing here though, so if you want to go and say highlight the nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, that actually might be kind of useful if you're trying to like learn how to read English, for example. And there's also a screen reader functionality, which works pretty well, to be honest. But there's plenty of other plugins that do exactly this. You don't really need Edge to do it. Now, even though on most sites it won't actually show an immersive reader icon, if we go and press F9, it will actually enable it wherever we want it to be enabled. A cool bit of functionality without much of a use case is the QR code functionality. So no matter what site you're on, if you go and click in the URL bar, you'll notice this little icon in here that appears. So this will let you create a QR code for this page. Now, that's cool. That's, that's cool. But who shares links like this? Unless you're trying to put like a QR code on a poster or a billboard, who actually uses QR codes to share a link? Normally, I would just send the link to someone that I want to send it to. Plus, I know there are extensions that do this anyway. There's also support for built-in translation. So if we go over to, say, like, the Japanese version of Yahoo, and if we click in the bar, it's going to prompt you to actually translate the page from Japanese into English. We can then go and translate it. And as we can see, it, it translates it. It's not actually going to be using the Google translation, though. It's going to be doing it through the Microsoft translation service, which seems to work about as well as Google Translate, so I don't really have any complaints there. We can also go and enable vertical tabs. Now, I think this might be one of the very few Chromium-based web browsers that does actually have this functionality. I don't believe you can do this with Brave, and you definitely can't do this with the base version of Chromium. If people want to use vertical tabs, typically they use Firefox, so maybe this will sell you on it. Edge also likes to bother you a lot about setting it as the default browser. Now, surprisingly, it didn't do it when we opened it before, but the entire time I was testing it yesterday, every time I opened it, it was saying, hey, set Edge as the default, set Edge as the default, do it, do it, do it, do it. Now it's not doing it. I don't know what exactly got rid of that prompt, but do keep in mind that it will be there. Now, I remember the last time I tested Edge over on Windows, it had a really annoying settings menu, but since then, it seems to have been basically dealt with. So everything is in these nice, neat little categories now, and there's a search bar. We can go and search for something like search. One annoying thing in here, though, is once you actually go and search for something, everything with that actually in its, like, text there is always going to be highlighted. Now, even if we go into something like address bar and search, you would think that if we get rid of what we've searched for here, it would just let us sit in this menu. Nope. No. It doesn't. So if you search for something, you just have to deal with there just being this annoying highlighting on everything and just when you're done with it, it'll go away. The one problem I do have with the settings menu, but this is just a general problem with Microsoft, is they really like to have this like really ugly slider everywhere. I don't understand why they think these sliders look good. They use them everywhere, but that's, that's how Microsoft designs stuff now. So that's just what's going to happen. One thing that is kind of cool, it does actually have a built-in dark mode. So we have a theme and we have an overall appearance. So if we want to have, say, like the light mode and then dark and stormy as our bar or dark mode and then uh, spicy red as our bar, we can actually go and do that. And those colors are controlled independently. And you can actually go and install other themes from the Chrome Web Store. It's nothing that crazy, but it is certainly a nice addition to have there. Speaking of nice additions, we also have a functionality known as Smart Copy. So normally when you want to go and copy, say, this entire paragraph here, you have to go and move your cursor over the entire thing. Smart Copy, on the other hand, is going to treat the entire thing as one big contained block. Now, obviously, most of the time you're not going to use this. You're going to copy small parts of it. But if you do need to copy an entire paragraph, it is slightly quicker to use it. I'm not going to use it that often though, so I wouldn't really consider it that big of a feature. Now there is one really, really useful functionality that Edge does have, and there's a reason why Edge gets a lot of use in corporate situations. 
And it's because Microsoft made this other web browser known as Internet Explorer, which is absolute garbage. And there's a lot of older websites that were designed specifically around Internet Explorer and don't actually work properly in anything else. And Edge actually has a compatibility mode that basically lets it run Internet Explorer websites with the Trident engine. Now, the way you enable that is with the IE mode flag, which doesn't exist on the Linux version. So the one functionality that makes Edge really useful, not on Linux. So my conclusion is basically, if you don't care about sending all of your data to Microsoft, it's just a Chromium browser. Like there's nothing really that exceptional about it. It just has a couple of nice extensions built into it. But in the same vein, there's nothing really that bad about it. It's just Chromium with a Microsoft skin. That's really all. I kind of wanted to hate this browser, but I'm leaving it feeling kind of bored. So I think that's going to be basically everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chica, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, uh, Josh, jo Peter Lee, Stephen, Theory, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support work, the links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech over T available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you like to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.